First, this housewife, whom we are about to consider, dreads and fears depression, so that when she feels one of her bouts approaching, she may rush feverishly through her work, trying to fill each moment, so that she will have no time to think about that hovering cloud. The fight has begun. And when her work is finished, she is so afraid to be alone, occupied with her thoughts, her feelings, she's off visiting one friend after another. She's off to the cinema, away to the supermarket, rushing here, rushing there, trying to forget the state she is in, trying to push away the threat of depression. But all the time, even when out, she watches herself apprehensively, thinking, oh my goodness, is it still there? I hope it won't come back when I get home. It is difficult to forget something while trying so hard to forget. The best way to remember is to try too hard to forget. So by feverishly rushing around, trying to ward off depression, trying so hard to forget that it threatens, this woman may succeed only in emphasising the threat. Also, agitated rushing is very tiring, so she becomes overtired, tense and irritable. Putting on an act before the family is also a strain, so the tension mounts and gradually brings sensitisation. And the wave of fear she feels then, when she thinks of approaching depression, becomes more and more acute. This spasm of fear comes in the pit of her stomach, in the exact spot where she feels the sinking feeling of depression. Indeed, there's so little to choose between these two feelings, fear and depression, that as the fear mounts, she translates this feeling of fear into the feeling of depression itself and is finally convinced that depression has arrived. At this point, she despairs, and despair is the finishing touch. She has but to feel one flash of utter despair to at last admit to herself and to the family that she really is having one of her bouts. And now comes the barrage of advice from family and friends. Pull yourself together, mother. Snap out of it, mother. Fight it, mother as if she hasn't already been fighting it for days, weeks, and getting nowhere, except more deeply. This is Dr. Weeks speaking. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk to you personally. First, I want to say that however long you may have suffered from nervous illness, if you wish to recover, you can. The main difference between a person ill for many years and someone ill for a short time is that the one who has suffered for long has had much more time to collect disturbing memories, especially the memory of much defeat, so that he despairs so easily. But there is nothing physically altered within this person determining that because he has been ill for so long, he cannot possibly recover now. However long you may have been ill, your body is waiting to recover in exactly the same way as the body of a person who has been ill for only a short while. The same processes of recovery are waiting to work as well for you as for anyone else. It is important to understand this because your illness is very much an illness of the way you think. It is very much an illness of your attitude to fear, to panic. You may think it's an illness of how you feel. It most certainly seems like this. But how you feel depends on how you think, on what you think. And because it is an illness of how you think, you can recover. Thoughts that are keeping you ill can be changed. In other words, your approach to your illness can be changed. Now, don't despair when you hear me say this I know how easily you despair, and I know how impossible it may seem to you at this moment to even imagine changing your approach to your illness. But it's my work to show you how to do this, to help you do this. Have the courage to listen on and see what you must do. Don't despair. Take heart. When I see a person who's been suffering from nervous illness for a long while, I don't think of him or her as hopelessly, chronically ill. Neither do I see a coward. I see a suffering, bewildered, but brave person 
who has possibly not had adequate explanation of their illness, adequate help. So many people have been cured at last after having been ill for many years, so that I, as a doctor, am never discouraged by a history of long illness. So however long your illness, if you want to recover, and if you're willing to play your part, you can recover. And by however long, I mean however long. Strength is not born from strength. Strength can be born only from weakness. So be glad of your weaknesses now. They are the beginnings of your strength. There are three main pitfalls that can lead into nervous illness. Sensitization, bewilderment and fear. Sensitization is a state in which our nerves react in an exaggerated way to stress. That is, they bring very intense feelings when under stress. And they may react this way with alarming swiftness, sometimes in a flash. There's no mystery about sensitization. We've surely all felt it in a mild way at the end of a tense day's work when our nerves feel on edge and little things upset us too much, constant tension alerts nerves to react in a mildly exaggerated way. It's not pleasant and we don't like it. If it's more severe, we may be alarmed by it and think that our nerves are in a very bad way indeed. So much nervous illness is no more than a continuous state of severe sensitization which is being kept alive by bewilderment and fear. Severe sensitization can come suddenly or gradually. It can come suddenly following an exhausting surgical operation, a difficult confinement,